All right, I've been withholding this one for a while, but now it's time to let it out. This is a quarter pro mist. This is an eighth pro mist. They're going in the garbage or they're going to two of you. So if you want one, let me know. I don't need them anymore because I can do it all in post. Black pro mist, one eighth, a quarter, full. We can see what glimmer glass looks like in multiple different strengths. Low con, regular pro mist, radiant soft, satin, smoke, soft effects. I was recently debating using an 8th Pro Mist on Cook Pancros. Thank God I didn't choose to use the 8th Pro Mist because the lenses are just beautiful on their own. Here's a frame from that project. This is a 32 millimeter full frame Pancro on the Mini LF. This is Simon. He wrote and directed the project. This is a test shot from one of the scenes in the film. I put a grade on the timeline because I just want to look at Scatter from Video Village. They have nothing to do with this video. I'm going to turn it on and we have a black promised quarter in here on and off. That is pretty amazing. This is really simple. You can choose which diffusion you're interested in and the strengths. You can change the intensity here. And what's really cool is that you can adjust your focal length. Diffusion will behave and look different on different focal lengths. Another cool thing here is highlight recovery. This light is warm right here with highlight recovery. It makes the glow the color of the light, which is great. And you can tune everything in here very nicely. The highlight adjustment also can let you get a little wild or tame what's happening in the highlights. This is a great thing that you really don't have control over when you're using actual filters like this. It really, really looks real. In a couple minutes, we'll take a look at a shot with this and then using the same filter in post and see how they match up. I don't even understand totally what's going on here, but for it to affect the image like this, and we can look in the scopes, you can see what's happening in the shadows even and it's just incredible to be able to use this instead of locking yourself into a filter is uh pretty cool also when i was doing the test on the cook lenses when i was looking at the monitor i thought that i would end up using the eighth and then when i pulled the footage into resolve and took a look i decided against using the eighth that further tells me i'm never gonna lock myself into a filter i'm sure there are scenarios where actually getting it through the lens will be different than this but even if they're not the same, I kind of consider it just a different type of filter. The same way that a satin filter is different than a black pro mist, I kind of consider this just like a different set of filters with the bonus of being able to tune them. Let's take a look at fog. So we can see fog is much different as it is in real life. This is a quarter and I have changed some of these settings. So I'm going to just revert everything, go back down to fog and that looks really nice. I don't know what's right for this project yet because it hasn't been graded and the edit isn't done yet, but in this very moment, I feel like a version of this is better than without it, but we'll just have to see what happens with the grade. The grade is in the timeline and that information I'm really holding back on. Maybe one day we'll get into that grade. That's years in the making. I like the look. So back to this fog quarter, here's a half and here's a two. It's crazy how it actually really like softens up the skin tones even. It's not just this that's happening. So we can look at another shot. This is one of those moments where I had to like step out of the room and not interrupt this performance because I was laughing so hard. This is the Cook 135, and I've mentioned a couple of times that 135 is my favorite focal length to shoot faces, depending on the context of the scene, of course, but I love how things look on a 135. And I think this was at a, maybe this was at a three or a four, somewhere around a T4. This is off the camera with the grade. This is with Promist 1. It's just crazy. When I go from this to this, it looks like it's been like over sharpened or something. Again, not sure if this is the final look for this type of project, but it is really cool. Hollywood Black Magic, that's a quarter. I'm clicking back and forth. I definitely like living in the lower strengths on these and it's a little hard to see, but the quarter does look good. And it's cool that you can increase the intensity of a quarter and you can see the difference there. And then you can go to a one and you can also increase the intensity of a one. So you have so many more options here to tune in something that you would regularly be locked into if you put a filter in front of your lens. Let's try just something different. I'll go to smoke because I heard when I was asking around in the discord, which you should join, uh, what filters people are using. Smoke was something that was discussed as being one of the good ones. 
So this looks pretty good actually. So I'm gonna take this 2X smoke and put it on our first shot. That's a lot. It kind of seems like it's taking this light source and hazing the lens a little bit, but maybe we'll bring that down. That's pretty good. So back to this, this even looks cool. We'll try that here. So we'll go to smoke. What do we have, 2X, crank it up. It actually looks like there's haze in the room kind of. I wish I had a smoke here to compare the smoke to, but I only have these two pro mist. Let's put this Pro Mist quarter over this lens. So here's a quarter and nothing. I'm a fan of technology and it improving my workflow and letting me create better and different things than I could have created two years ago. I have always thought about the filter situation with a little bit of nervousness in locking myself into something because it really is tough when you're looking through a viewfinder or looking at the monitor, when you're also focused on other things and you're not comparing it back and forth on the computer, it's tough for me at least to make a decision like, yes, this filter's good. Oh, we changed lenses. Do I need to put in a different filter? I don't know. I can't really see what's happening unless it's looking back and forth at each one. Having this is really nice to be able to get the look that you might have been wanting to go after that you didn't do because you didn't want to lock yourself in. Tons of tuning capabilities and I just love it. Okay, so we'll cycle through this shot of me with a bunch of them. We have Black Diffusion FX, Black Frost, Black Pro Mist, Classic Soft, Fog, Glimmer Glass, Hollywood Black Magic, Locon, Mitchell Diffusion, Pearlescent, Radiant Soft, Regular Pro Mist, Satin, Scatter, Smoke, and Soft FX. Almost infinite amount of options that you have in here to tune your image in a way that's different than just color grading. There are a few things on the market that are amazing, and this is one of them. So for this shot, we'll take a look at an eighth Pro Mist. We have a little bit of the bright light in the background. We'll see what it looks like with it on the lens. And now I'm going to take it off the lens and add it in Resolve. Here's one shot with the filter on the lens. And here's the shot with it matched in post. One of these has the filter on the lens and one of them does not. Here's the first shot and here's the second shot. Take a guess what you think is the actual filter and which one is done in post. These are so close, I literally cannot believe it. If you haven't already, first two people that mention these, I'll let you battle it out for which one you want, but I will mail you these. I literally just do not need them anymore. Dropbox, 99.3% used.